welcome or welcome back to our global conversation about peace. This session that we're having today that we're all a part of is actually the first in a second year of conversations. It's a, our second in a series of sessions about our opportunities to share the commitment to fostering a spirit of peace and understanding among the peoples of the world. One person, one family, one community at a time. Now, as a reminder, today we're not here to discuss political situations or the absence of war. We're here to discuss how each of us can contribute to peace one community at a time. We know that the definition of peace has evolved to what may be a more realistic um, view. It's, it's a statement about the quality of life we want to live. So we ask ourselves questions. Do we live in a community, in a society, in which we can leave our homes and not fear? Do we have security or do we feel threatened? Can we be at peace in our communities where we volunteer, where we work, worship, live? Can we be at peace in our communities? Are we equal partners in our communities? Or are we marginalized or restricted by unjust barriers? Do we see others who are marginalized or restricted by unfair injustices? Are we unknowingly or inadvertently creating barriers or restrictions that, that impose limits on others? We, we need to reach out. We need to be able to connect to all people in our communities to create a sense of inclusion rather than division. We need to embrace the diversities in our communities. We need to connect. Dale, could you show us the connect video that you've got queued up for us today, please? When the astronauts went up into space and they're coming back and they see the gorgeous sphere which is the earth many many astronauts of all nations had an epiphany the barriers of nations of race the barriers of religion were all one and that is the purpose of mindfulness let's spread that amazing story and as we go around the world today, we see this strife and we see that strife and we see this calamity and these hardships. In one generation, we have the opportunity to change that paradigm and spread mindfulness and meditation. And together, they can't stop us from saving the world. What a great video. What a great way to remind us that we are all global citizens living in one world. I want to share with you today an amazing project. Um, conversations about peace can often lead us in directions unanticipated, but let's learn more about Recipes for Peace, a cookbook that has grown out of conversations. Recipes for peace. Thank you so much for joining us today for this conversation about peace. And I'm so excited to have you share what is a truly unique way of creating peace in your communities and all around the world. Now, I understand that the end outcome so far of this project is that you've created a cookbook for peace, but it started long before that. Isn't that right? Zainab, how did this start for you? 
Um, actually, there were a couple of things that came together. The first truth was new voices, because new voices is about diversity, inclusion, and in a way bringing harmony to our um, lives in lines and in, in our daily lives. But also your movement, Global Conversation About Peace, um, made some of us in different countries in Europe, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, Turkey, uh, South Africa, now Germany, to come together, to cook together, especially during the diff difficult times of the pandemic, to create a place of peace, understanding, harmony, uh, to create a bridge of um, understanding, kindness, maybe. Uh, and when we heard about the um, the recipes for peace project, it really thrilled us because um, both the global conversation about peace and the recipes for peace uh, was um, integrating our intention for peace and harmony into our daily lives, you know, into our daily actions. So we were really um, honored and thrilled to be a part of this movement. Thank you, Zainab. Now, what country are you in? I'm from Turkey. Wonderful. Now, Marie, I understand that you met Zainab online in one of our conversations about peace. Um, is how how did this first this story about uh, uh, connecting with people in Turkey and around the world happen for you, Marie? We formed an event where everybody from the different nations um, brought their dishes from their countries. And of course, we invited in that part the past international president, Joe Preston. And while Joe was there, he had mentioned that he had composed a song about peace. So for Arizona, that started the ball rolling. And when Daniel again uh, approached me about the recipes for peace, that was game over. I was like all over it. I thought it was a great idea. And even if I don't cook, I thought a recipe would make great Christmas presents for my friends. So that's here I am and I'm on board 100%. Isn't it amazing what happens when people offer us opportunities to get involved? You know, we can all offer opportunities to others to come and be a part of the conversation about creating peace in our communities. So that, of course, you've mentioned, Marie, that brought Joe, your good friend through Lions Clubs, to yeah. the conversation. Joe, how did you get involved in the project? recipes for peace this cookbook project well it, it all started when we were attending some of the seminars that you were hosting uh, regarding peace and it was not only your words but the words of the special speakers you brought in that really inspired us that you know dreaming and wishing and, and hoping for peace is really not enough we need to really be intentional and be uh, take action towards that and really inspired us and, and so we were on a zoom call and we decided uh, what we could do to raise some money for our charity, LCIF, Lions Clubs International Foundation, and promote peace at the same time. And that's kind of the inspiration behind it. Thank you. Now, now I, I know, Zainab, you were hosting the, the uh, taste stops to bring people together and to share across cultures and countries. And then Marie took her idea and involved Joe. Heather, how did you get involved with the project? I happen to be the mother of um, a lion. Um, I'm Daniel Marnie Elkins. I also happen to be a rather uh, bad cook. So um, when he proposed that I would edit a book on recipes from around the world, I um, assumed that this might be a way of penance. <laughs> that I might be able to uh, put together a cookbook um, to make up for all the um, uh, the meals that he endured uh, growing up. And then I reached out um, to this wonderful online um, taste stop uh, wonder uh, that I had been following on Facebook, even as a uh, want to be cook. I found it fascinating the combination of of posters and and people and taking a single uh, like a peach for the theme for a month. I thought it was fabulous. So 
my intention was uh, one to just reach out to these wonderful people and then two no matter what book you might produce so many people now find their recipes online so i wanted to be able to in one book provide a window into the virtual world that um, taste stop represents and they would carry that on and intermingle with the idea of um of a of a book oh thank you heather and uh, you know i see zane nodding you know when you started your online taste stops did you ever imagine that this would grow to be a multinational global in way of bringing people together I mean, since the earliest history of our forefathers of humankind, we've all gathered around food. And we, we still, to this day, gather around a campfire and share food. But to, to be able to bring the world together, to share our diverse tastes and cultures, and find the commonalities, you know, the commonality that we could all do a recipe around a peach, it's amazing. Um, so, what what role did the virtual world play in making this project happen? I, I want to ask that question to Daniel. In order to have a good meal, you must set the table. And the virtual world provided the table setting of which brought together all of the pieces and connections. And so this conversation about peace could not have been possible in any other way than by connecting people from different time zones and different points all at the same time to share in this global conversation about peace. So, uh, VP Patty, you set the table and invited people to the table and from those conversations uh, actions were inspired in different communities so you had people literally all over the world uh, beginning to share recipes and it, it then from that moment it took someone who had traveled the world and met all of the connections to put those pieces together so uh, past international president Joe Preston having traveled the world and visited all of these places and made connections with people was able to use the virtual world to reach out and collect in recipes from over uh, 22 countries uh, from various community leaders uh, yes how many countries 37 and taste stop includes far more than that yes e e exactly so to reach out uh, to over 37 countries not including the ones that had already been connected to through through taste stop all of that made possible because we can connect to each other in a virtual world almost instantaneously and to be able to assemble those ingredients into uh the meal that has become the recipes for peace project thank you daniel you know technology is a tool but the greatest resource we have are our human resources. Lion Joe, I know that you became the president of Lions Clubs International and served in that role for a year, uh, traveling the world, as has been mentioned. So you took the initiative to reach out all around the world. Tell me about that. How did you connect, collect these recipes? Well, I, I reached out to friends from around the world, sent out emails. I probably sent out over 100 emails to people and, and, and also put it on social media and, and such and got some response that way as well. Uh, but it was very supported by the Lions. They, they jumped on board the project and wanted to share. But, but it's just not a cookbook of, of recipes. It, it has poems and, and posters and, and things throughout it promoting peace. So the whole theme is very international, but it's bringing people together for a purpose. Thank you so much. This amazing cookbook, which was a, a global project from all of you coming together, uh, regardless of the country where you reside, with a common purpose to promote inclusion and harmony in our communities, in fact, to, to be peacemakers. This cookbook brings together so many aspects. Now, those of you 
who may be uh, affiliated with the Lions Club know that we have within Lions global causes. When there is inequity, when there is marginalization, people don't feel included and there is strife and conflict. We create peace through inclusion. Now, for the cookbook, Heather, how is it organized? Can you review that for us and tell us how the cookbook is organized? The decision was to uh, strengthen and, in fact, educate about Lion's mission for world peace using the five major focuses that um, right now are being followed. And they began with hunger, diabetes, and that's one category. Environment is another. Special Olympics, youth, childhood cancer is another. Then there is the historic visions, which has always marked lions and their work. And then humanitarian aid and disaster relief. So those five missions were then um, used to integrate the very diverse, uh, very diverse recipes that we received. And in each section, the mission is presented matched with a wonderful peace poster that helps us understand how the youth are in fact witnessing to peace with their art. Thank you so much, Heather. Um, Zainab, I know that a lot of this work continues uh, with you. Uh, the Lions Club has a movement called New Voices, and it's a movement to be inclusive, to ensure that all voices are heard within our work. Can you tell us a bit more about the Lions New Voices Taste Stop? Um, Taste Stop started as a district project in Turkey during the pandemic uh, with New Voices to bring people who felt more isolated together to make them feel included and make them feel that they belong to a family and that they're safe and secure in peace, harmony. And then it, uh, with the pandemic, with the connections of the internet, with the uh, Zoom meetings, we were able to create, become an international family. Other countries joined. And then using social media with our Facebook group, with our uh, Facebook pages, we started to connect with other people. And um, of course, we realized we may be different, but we are so much the same with our emotions and thoughts and our needs. And it was a great feeling to discover that through food, as you know, mentioned, that brings us together, that gives us maybe the feelings of being cared for, being loved, or how we express love and kindness, and how we bring happiness and harmony and that peace energy into our lives. So um, Taste Stop continues. We are um, in almost week 80 now. We cook each week and we have participants from all around the world leos lions non-lions family members are joining and we are really grateful to you know, your moment and also recipes for peace for opening another door to bring the world you know more together and to creating pay stop and opportunity to um, reach out to more people to experience um, this movement of kindness and harmony and peace all together. And ho I hope that we will continue with increasing energy in the future. Thank you. Zainab, if, if I want to join the Taste Stop, where do I find you? Um, on Facebook. Please find our Facebook page, Lions New Voices Taste Stop, and reach out to us. We'll be honored to join forces and cook together and share together. Thank you so much. So with these diverse projects from around the globe, we are bringing people together from more than 50 different countries just to share recipes and, and cooking. I'm very excited to know that we can continue this work by having virtual meals together to share our experiences with the recipes you've gathered, or new recipes that we want to share with others from around the world. I hope that each of you will reach out to your family, your 
colleagues, your community, and invite them to be part of the global conversation about peace. Wasn't that great? Uh, what a fantastic project. And thank you to all of you who are involved in creating the Recipes for Peace cookbook. As you saw on the screen, all proceeds that come from the sale of this cookbook go right back into our charitable foundation. Now, some of you who are with us today are just dedicated volunteers in your community. Some of you belong to organized groups such as Lions, Rotary, Kiwanis, Optimus, we could go on. But uh, because I belong to Lions Clubs, I want to share that for more than 30 years, Lions Clubs International has been fostering peace and understanding among the youth of the world through the Peace Poster Contest. This year's contest theme is Lead with Compassion. And we're going to give away a Peace Poster kit right now. The kit brings you everything you need if you want to conduct a Peace Poster activity with youth in your community. So we're going to give away a kit right now to help you initiate your own Peace Poster contest. Andrea, do you have that ready for us? Thank you, Vice President Patty. So this year's contest, Peace Poster Contest operates under the title, under the team, Lead with Compassion. And to participate in the contest, you need to have a kit. In order to see if, uh, who gets a kit from this, uh, from this session, I would kindly spin slowly the wheel just to see who gets a Peace Poster Contest. Neo Seng Kwang. So we have a winner, Neo Seng Kwang. Congratulations, Neo Seng Kwang. Please contact me into the chat box and share your contact details so that we can make sure that you get your Peace Poster Contest kit so that your club can organize a contest in your community and you can participate in the global contest. Thank you, Vice President Paddy. Thank you, Andrea, and congratulations, Neil. Um, yes, we we shared the Lions uh, project that was the Recipes for Peace, uh, hoping that that would inspire you to see the possibilities. By giving away a Peace Poster Kit, we want to put tools in your hands so that you can go out into the community and truly engage in a conversation about peace with young people. Because every day, in every community, in every one of our lives, we can find ways to promote harmony and peace. It begins with each of us, individually. Am I at peace myself? Am I at peace in my family? Or do we have work to do? Am I at peace in my workplace? Or do we need to find harmony and inclusion and understanding of each other and each other's challenges? What about my social groups? Those I socialize with or any group I might belong to? Am I contributing to peace? Or am I in fact one of those who creates division? So the focus every day can be Am I creating peace? Am, am I engaged in peaceful, productive discussions? Have I worked to increase inclusion and understanding of others? We don't want a world which perpetuates barriers. 
We don't want to perpetuate stereotypes or prejudging others. So we ask ourselves each day, what can I do to create peace in, in my sphere, in my circle of influence? Every one of you is an influencer. We ask, am I taking time to get to know others, to appreciate their point of view, their lived experience, or am I maybe too quick to assume I know what they're going through? What can I do to start a conversation about, about living in peace with diversity, with inclusion, with all members of my universal human family? Because we can change our space. Yes, together we can. In fact, on September 21st each year, we are invited as members of this human race to participate in a celebration called the International Day of Peace. You saw earlier some amazing collaboration that came together just because individuals were focused on peace in the past year. Before we go to breakout rooms and brainstorm some ways that you might celebrate peace during International Peace Day, discussing projects that have already come to mind from the inspiring discussion we've had with our recipe builders, let's look to the Lions of New Jersey for some inspiration. Greetings from New Jersey, everyone. This is past council chair Lion Mahesh Chitness from Multiple District 16, New Jersey. The purpose of Lions International is very, very broader, but at the same time, we focus on certain things. The third most important purpose of Lions International is to promote understanding within different communities in the world. The peace is an uh, integral part of this process. The Edison Visionary Lions Club, along with our partner Lions Clubs, we started this event in uh, 2016 to get different communities together, different groups together, and talk about peace. It is an inter interfaith peace event in Princeton. We collaborate with uh, the local Rotary Club, local Kiwanis Club, different faith organizations. We come together on the International Peace Day and talk about peace, talk about understanding, talk about the collaborations. This is how it looks. For the last eight years, the, these Rotary Lions and Kiwanis, we are coming together and we are taking turns to host this event. We had a privilege of hosting it three times so far. We decided to come together and have this interfaith event with people from various countries, people from uh, various faiths come together. We speak about peace. We have prayers for peace in, uh, in various languages read by the children of various faiths. We have the cultural presentation from different countries, the dances from China, the uh, singing from Korea, the dances from India and Sri Lanka and Nepal and we, we all come together and spend an afternoon, early evening to talk about peace. This last year, we also had an initiative to have a international competition for the youth to talk about peace. We had a collaboration from India, from a group called uh, Roar with Rishi. Uh, and Roar with Rishi and Edison Visionary Lions Club came together and we had the speakers from the uh, the high schools from all over the world. We had about 50 speakers speaking about peace and we presented the awards during this peace event that we had. Uh, this was a virtual event, a virtual competition, but the event was in person and we presented the awards during that, that event. Uh, it is a good way to bring everyone together to talk about the religions outreach to other religions the many times there is this 
uh, lack of understanding of other cultures. So this this was a good chance for us to get together, understand it, the the other cultures, and make the peace as our sole goal for uh, this collaboration. Thank you so much for sharing that, Mahesh and Jody. Um, I think it's time for you to talk about how we're going to share. I am so excited to hear what everyone's going to come up with because it's time for the breakout rooms. And this is an opportunity for each of us to share project ideas for promoting peace and understanding, one family, one neighborhood, and one community at a time. As you're thinking about your peace projects and sharing, make sure that you're identifying groups or individuals that you might not usually be in contact with that you might want to connect and part, partner with to help spread peace even further. We're going to give you 30 minutes on the clock for this breakout room. Your room will have a moderator in the room to help keep the discussion going. And if you'd like and everyone agrees, please take a screenshot of the group and share it on social media to help spread the conversation about peace. With that, Dale, I think we're ready to jump into the breakout room. So we'll see you all back in 30 minutes and be ready to share your ideas out when you get here. Welcome, welcome. I am Joanne Ferguson from Trinidad and Tobago, District 60, Dabadi Lions Club. And we are here to discuss the peace the peace that we are trying to create here in our lives, in our clubs, in our communities. So the floor is open. I'm going to ask somebody to please take a screenshot for me. And if somebody can maybe record on their own device if they would like to have a copy of this little segment here. So please welcome and you are free to start. Greetings. Greetings, greetings, Lan Eleanor. How are you? I am very well, thank you. So let's start the conversation. I am Lan Eleanor P. Clark from Melvin Jones Fellow from the Lions Club of Christ Church West, MD 60B, 60B um, Barbados, West Indies. We had my club, um, Christ Church West, we did a peace project last year. And some of these, topics that we looked at were conflict resolution, decision making, goal setting, um, time management, responsibilities, personal relationship, and healthy living, healthy eating. But for this year, we are continuing the project and what we are doing, we are looking at mentoring, mentoring um, some of the youth who attended the project and also in the schools. So, you know. I think we lost both Eleanor and Joanne. So um, is anyone else that's here right now on the call that would like to jump in and chat? We are actually here chatting about any ideas for peace projects that our clubs might take on and organize in, re in relation to International Day of Peace or beyond. So I'm not sure if any of you who are on the call right now have anything to share on that. I don't even know if you can hear me, but our club are, um, we're going to plant flowers um, at a seniors complex. Uh, we have a lot of younger lions, so we're going to um, plant flowers with the seniors, hoping to foster uh, peace sort of intergenerationally. So we're going to bring treats and, and hang out and talk and just get to know uh, different generations. That is so cool, Kim. I mean, the opportunity to get to know another generation have that connection then between your younger members and those a lot of times people who are kind of forgotten in those senior centers and nursing homes that's very very cool what a great project kim is here but kind of but not exactly i see her move not every now and again yeah. <laughs> it is what it is yeah. my friend yeah <laughs> I know last year, 
and I will do it again this year, um, the whole concept of sidewalk chalk. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that's available across the globe, but being able to go back and forth and walk around the neighborhoods and just say, be kind or sharing, you know, your messages of peace on your sidewalks is a really great way to spread the word in your local neighborhoods. I've also recently seen a very interesting project in one of the local communities here. This is not driven by a Lions Club necessarily, but it just, you can go out and on all your community signs, if you have businesses that have electronic signs or if they wanna paint their windows, just to say, be kind or spread peace would be an awesome way to get the word out there and go further along. We actually have a Lions Club up here that um, made Be Kind signs and sold them. They're like a, a yard sign for like $10 a piece so they can recoup the costs and all over their community. It's fantastic. I was transiting through an airport uh, recently and there was a, a standalone kiosk sales um, a spot and everything they sold was like be kind you know human kindness it was that was that was the only thing they sold it was t-shirts hats coffee cups travel mugs but that everything was just about being kind to each other there's a lot of communities at least in our area post covid the behavior of some students has been less than ideal, we'll say. Mm -hmm. And so there's been a lot of communities that are working on these be kind campaigns across the whole community in order to try to um, help everyone understand the value and the benefit of being kind. Gosh, there's never been a better time for Lions Quest, has there? There truly has never been a better time. And unfortunately, we just, at least here in the States, it's not getting out the way we would hope it would. I had a wonderful conversation this week with a doctor who works um, on smoking cessation and uh, addictions reduction with in partnership with the World Health Organization. <clears throat> and we were meeting for a completely different reason. And he turned to me and he said, you're with Lions, right? And I said, yes. And he said, Lions Quest is the best evidence-based program out there. He said, it beats all the others hands down. He said, it's what we need to be using. And I said, okay, let me just get that on video. Uh, you know, I didn't prompt him. I didn't bring it up. He already knew about it. It's, you know, from what everything I've heard from everyone who comes from that background, that is exactly what I hear. The challenge is, is that at least in our communities here, that D.A.R.E. program is still around, which I don't know if that was a global program or not, but it was run by the well, police departments. And I think schools really latched onto it because it gave them sort of a, a breathing point where somebody else would come in, talk to the kids about it. Right. But um, I was uh, very keen when a, a student I knew doing a Ph.D. did a study comparing the efficacy of Lion's Quest versus D.A.R.E. And, you know, D.A.R.E. was very well intentioned. It created a rapport between kids and community police officers, but it did absolutely nothing in terms of harm reduction. Yeah. Uh, it was not the effective outcome that they thought it would be. And so um, across the area where I live, the D.A.R.E. program has been essentially dropped, although you still find the odd pocket of you know people who've been doing it for 20 years and continue to do it now you know i mean that's a branded a program and and um you know there are some good outcomes from it but it certainly isn't a lifestyle program the way that lions class quest from those critical early developmental years you know age five and and so um are influencing uh, the lives of children through the adults that they're in contact with. Correct. Yeah, I'm writing down to see if we can get back into the school system again, because we tried okay. a number of years ago and got nowhere, but it's maybe a good time to reach back out again. You know, certainly where there's a need. There's Alliance Quest. Right, exactly. 
Um, you know, and so our club just made a donation to Quest this week because just to get help. Breaking up a bit, Kim. I hope you can hear me because I'm going to give you what we in the Lions Club call a fine. I'm going uh, to fine you for not calling it by its hyphenated proper name. <laughs> you, you know that I do that. Uh, if someone says Lions Quest but leaves out the word Lions, then I, 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 I challenge them to make a donation to the cause. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I know that we've got some people who've joined us and rejoined us, possibly due to some internet connection problems. Our breakout rooms are still running for another nine minutes, 10 minutes. And I'm sure we're going to hear some great ideas on, on projects. Even in the chat room, I was already seeing, you know, that extension from, you know, sharing food to sharing music, to sharing cultures, to, to learning about each other's uh, music and cultures and traditions and belief systems. So there are so many ways we can create uh, inclusion. I was just going to let you know, Vice President Patty, that I am allowing and asking any of these individuals who are joining us now, if they'd like to jump in on the conversation and share any ideas they might have about peace projects or ways to spread peace in their local areas. Let's, let's ask uh, uh, Dr. Narveen to uh, share what you might be doing to promote peace. I hope that your area is doing the peace poster contest. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Very good. We have International Director Elena Apiani with us today, and I'm not sure if Elena is in a place where she can unmute and talk with us. Yeah, unmuted. Idea, Elena, would you like to talk about uh, peace idea, hello, hello. ideas for peace? I would like that uh, uh, the Italian Lions uh, um, share the poster of peace uh, in every clubs. I would like 100% uh, poster of peace. I, I proposed this uh, at uh, our um, council chair, and uh, I hope that uh, in the next um, uh, DG's uh, council, it is possible to um, to have the, the, the to, to share that these ideas um, for all people. Wonderful. Yes. I also um, was speaking with a lion from your part of the world in, in Italy, who was uh, excited to include the peace conversation in youth exchange camps this summer. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. We, we are working very, very hard on this because it is important that uh, um, the camp uh, um, could be a, 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 a space dedicated to the peace. It is very important to international understanding and the peace. You've said some very important things there, Elena. You know, we have to create a space where these youth can have the conversation, just as maybe at work or in our social clubs. We have to create a space where it is normal and natural to talk about what brings us together, our common desire for peace and harmony, rather than living in strife and stress and too high a cortisone levels. And, you know, our, our bodies are not yes. built to be under it, constant stress. Yes, it, it is important also into the club, into the club every meeting a, a little bit to speak about peace because uh, uh, there is a very hard situation in Europe in particular in, at this, this time. Uh, it is very important to understand that uh, um, throughout the, um, the, <clears throat> the sh sharing idea, it is important uh, to build the peace. Absolutely. Rapesh, what's going on in your area? In our area, we have a peace competition. And just now, the Mayesh Chitney shared with him, we had collaborated with him. 
for the allocation competition, we had involved uh, around the 80 to 100 students all around the globe. And we had uh, told them during the virtual world, we told them to record their speech and share it. And our judge has made a, a finale. And that way we had worked last year because of virtual. This year we are having a peace poster competition, which will be conducted in various schools and around, I think so, around the 10 to 12,000 kids will be there by the end of the deadline, which is given by international. And thinking something new also to have it. Thanks. No, I, think, I think there's that real opportunity for us to also reach out through the peace essay contest and to be in touch with schools where there may be visually impaired or blind uh, youth going to school and offer them that opportunity to to have the conversation to talk about what peace would look like or mean for them and then to be able to write their short essay about peace and submit it for a peace essay contest as well you know we anywhere where we're already doing peace poster we can certainly expand and include the peace essay Welcome back to the main room. It's great to see so many friends online with us today and some new faces as well. And what great conversations were going on in, in the room I was in anyway. We've heard what you told us last year during our conversations. And that is that you miss out. You, you're curious to know what was going on in the other rooms. So please use the chat function to share some of the projects that you can envision undertaking for this September's International Day of Peace. International Day of Peace is on September 21st. And we know that your project, your activity might be someday during the week of September 21st that works for you. But please post ideas right now. Well, we've, we've set aside some time for you to do that so that the sharing can truly happen. And in fact, we're going to give you two minutes. You also can save the chat at the end of the uh, discussion today so that all those wonderful ideas are, are yours at your fingertips when you take them back to your family and say, what is our family going to do? Uh, I see one now, meeting on a border, whether it be a real border or an invisible one, and shake hands with a person on the other side. Take a photo and share it. What a great thing to do. Thanks for posting that idea, Richard. Oh, I see it's a perfect uh, time to take your family out and uh, to dinner. Maybe it's that gathering, it's bringing voices together. An international coastal cleanup. Thank you, Nancy. I know that you are so engaged in justice for our environment. Lion Jody, I hope that you have an expansion plan for your sidewalk chalk messages of peace. Who wouldn't want to be walking down the street and find not litter, not trash, but a message of peace right there on the sidewalk? Oh, cooking and sharing meals across borders. Thank you, Mary. And yes, of course, uh, we have our Celebrate Community Week coming up the week of September 11th. So coming together with other groups like the Rotary, the Newcomers Center, Further Education and other ethnic cultural groups. Well done, Barb. Yes, we celebrate community the week of September 11th and we celebrate peace on September 21st. Oh, volunteer at Special Olympics. Thank you, Jenny. Food distribution to the needy. What a great way to deal with food insecurity and the injustice around the imbalance between the have and the have not when it comes to food security. We have some other things that we can do. 
but all of us can do something, be it big or small. We know that together we can. I'd ask Shahenda now to give us some detailed information about how we can get involved with Peace Poster. Shahenda. And if you can unmute when you're ready. Hello, VP Patty. Thank you so much for having me with you today. Thank you so much for all the attendees. Uh, the 2022-2023 contest, contest theme, Lead with Compassion. Children know how powerful compassion can be. They are often able to express this feeling more openly than adults. This year, we invite you people to explore and visually express the peaceful future that compassionate leadership brings. Peace Poster Contest Deadlines. Student age 12, 11, 12, 13, as of November 15, are eligible to participate in the International Peace Poster Contest. Entries not meeting the following deadlines will be disqualified. January 15th, kits go on sale from the Club Supplies Sales Department at International Headquarters. October 1st, deadline to, to purchase kids for, kits from the Club Supplies Sales Department at International Headquarters. November 15th, postmark deadline for a club to send one winning poster per contest sponsored to the district governor. December 1st, postmark deadline for a district governor to send one winning district poster to multiple district council chairperson. December 1st, postmark deadline for a district governor not belonging to multiple district to send one winning poster to the brand and creative department at international headquarters. December 1st, postmark deadline for a club not belonging to, to a district to send one winning entry to the brand and creative department at international headquarters. December 15th, postmark deadline for the multiple district council chairperson to send one winning poster to the brand and creative department at international headquarters. February 1st, international winners notified or on or before this date. And now that you know more about this fantastic project, let's draw another peace poster kit winner. Maybe we should all have a drum roll. Okay, so we have Carmen Matthew. I know for a fact that she has entered the room several times. I've seen her name pop up. So Carmen Matthew is our winner of a Peace Poster Contest kit. Carmen, can you please contact me in, uh, in the chat so that we can have your uh, contact address and send you a Peace Poster Contest kit. Thank you for participating in, in this and congratulations on the win. Vice President Patty, back to you. Thank you and congratulations to our winners and to all of you who've shared so many great ideas right there in the chat. Remember that in the area where you typically type your chat message, there are extended menu, three dots usually. And if you click on that, you can save the chat. I've already saved it for myself. I love your great ideas for promoting peace and harmony, because that's really what, what point we've come to today. It's fine to talk about peace, but we need to take action. And so what can we do to create and foster that spirit of understanding among the people of the world, one relationship at a time, one community at a time? So during the next three weeks, plan a community activity that you can complete, however big or small, to foster that spirit of understanding and peace in your community. Focus on engaging with community partners if you have time to reach out and connect with them, or if you have existing connections. And promote your activities on all of your social media platforms using hashtag GCPeace. 
hashtag the letter G, the letter C, peace. The week of September 21st, International Day of Peace, conduct your community event and make sure to capture all of the great service that you're doing through your videos, your photos, your live streaming, but be willing to share that with the world to multiply the impact of your desire to promote peace. By September 30th, share your summary of your service, share your story, um, and then on October 23rd, we will meet back here online again for a celebration and a sharing of all of these activities that you've posted and submitted. And we'll showcase the actions you took to create and foster global peace, one community at a time. Sometimes this might seem like a daunting task creating peace, being a peacemaker. But be brave. Step out of your comfort zone if necessary and take action to build connections in this next month. Engage a partner in your peace activity. Daniel, are you online with us to, to give details about the reporting process? I know nice. you've had some interesting connection challenges today. Vice President Patty, I'm going to go through that for Daniel because he is not connecting so well today from the internet. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how to report your service. And this is really rele relevant, not only to the Lions and Leos on the call, but to any member of the community on the call today. So we're gonna start with, if you are a Lion or Leo, please report your project or activity in my Lion. Again, using that hashtag GCP handle that Patty re referenced a moment ago. Then Patty referenced also that we're having a big celebration on October 23rd. October 23rd is designed to allow us to see all the amazing things and be inspired about what all the Lions have been doing in relation to the International Day of Peace. If you would like your project potentially to show up in that show and other areas, we're asking you to submit that in one of two ways. Either either share it through your project on lcifpride.org. That's lcifpride.org. That's our Lions Clubs Inter International Foundation site for capturing stories, videos, and projects that Lions across the globe are doing. Anyone can log in there, whether you're a Lion, Leo, or not, and share your project, I believe. The other option is that you can go ahead and upload your project as seen to the Lions Virtual Group, which is the group behind running these meetings. And I've dropped into the chat how you can share your project. The upload your project to GCP report is actually a Google form that you can fill out that you'll be able to drop your videos, your photos, all of that in there. Don't forget to have a videographer or someone there at your events to capture your event so you can spread the word about what you did. And the last piece that's so important is make sure you report your service project, what you're doing to expand peace and spread peace to your local government and local media. All of our areas are different, but spreading that word from your Lions standpoint or from your grassroots standpoint about peace is so important. And I'll add one last thing, Vice President Patty, and to remember, again, use photos, use videos, and a project description that's going to help inspire others to want to get involved in spreading peace across the globe. Then there's just one other piece to this. Lion Dale, if you could put up the how we can get involved in the October 23rd event. The party, the big celebration is October 23rd. It'll be at the same time as this event was. If you would like to register, you can go ahead and register as seen on screen. There is a uh, QR code. That's the word that we're looking for. I'm also gonna drop it into the chat window right now. So you've got the link to be able to register for the event. It's gonna be a lot of fun and it's gonna be a great way to inspire all of us to do further peace. We encourage you to invite any community partners that you worked with on this project your family, your friends, and your club to this event to really truly celebrate peace across the global organization. So Vice President Patty, 
Did you have any final words of inspiration for us today? Well, since we seem to have lost Vice President Patty, I will close this out by saying thank you so much, everyone that's here today, for joining in on this conversation. Peace is such an important concept to each and every one of us across the globe, and it all starts with ourselves. Peace begins with each and every one of us being peaceful with, you. within ourselves.